I'll call on uh, Ms. Beaulieu to go to the legislative agenda. Good morning. Always a pleasure to see you. Uh, legislative update quickly. So we have had a healthy spate of committees dedicated to studying education issues over the course of these months before the short session. Everything from pre-K and early childhood education to the Every Student Succeeds Act, teacher salaries, principal pay, etc. So uh, what we have before us today is a draft set of issues for the State Board to consider in terms of our short session legislative agenda. Now, three points of procedure before we dive into uh, what is just a two-page document before you in the draft list of legislative issues for 2016. One, of course, what we decide as a board is driven much by what our budget supplemental recommendations are. So I understand that that action item is before you today later on in our uh, session this morning with Mr. Alcorn as the chair of that business operations committee. So keep in mind that these two items are t in tandem, the budget supplemental recommendations and our legislative agenda, of course. Uh, that's number one. Number two, this is a draft list. So what we have done up until now is, of course, gain input from our chair, our vice chair, members of this board, the superintendent, and others to, uh, to make decisions about what we're going to aim for in this, and I emphasize, short session. I'm hearing as recent as last week, this week, that uh, it could be six weeks. So any short session is always fast and furious, but, uh, but for a host of reasons, this one may very well be on the shorter side. We'll see. Uh, last procedural point is that, as I understand it, we're still planning to discuss this draft list in the weeks ahead. So this is just a, a preliminary set of issues, and we may very well have time set aside at our next board meeting and in the weeks beforehand to still delve deeper into this and finalize it before we have the April 25th legislative um, short session. So with all, of, with all of those preliminary comments, I do invite your input and your questions on what we see before us. I'll call it our lucky 13. Somehow it managed to be, at least for now, a list of 13 items. And then you'll see a chart at the end of, um, outlining 10 what I'll call recent General Assembly mandates or priorities and uh, staffing evidence here at the agency. So first, I'd like to commend the board on its discussion yesterday and input on professional development and more or less upping the ante to a potential $12 million recurring request on professional development. Uh, what I'm hearing, of course, from superintendents and principals and teachers and educator, education leaders across the state, it has to be a top priority, as you well know. I'm preaching the choir on that front. Just want to say thank you. Uh, so I'll walk through and, in, and please interject any questions or comments as we go. And uh, professional development we just discussed and educator effectiveness, number one. Number two, obviously teacher leaders, teacher pay, we're committed to that as a board. Number three, textbooks and digital resources in terms of a big funding request. Uh, number four, related obviously to that funding request, are, is our digital learning plan. Number five, the virtual public school and maintaining our commitment to that, especially with the growth that we foresee and uh, its long term, sh both short term and long term sustainability. Number six, instructional supplies. We still have a ways to go to catch up with the pre-recession dollars insofar as just papers, pencils, school equipment would be nice to have. Uh, number seven, turning around low-performing schools. This is a hot topic, uh, as many of us know. And as I have traveled the state and talking with superintendent groups, the 2015 new definition of low performing schools and when I say new definition I mean as changed by state law in the budget last year uh, this is a topic of interest and I am hearing 
sort of two uh, extremes, if you will, in how to look at that 2015 state law definition. One, there are some who would like us to take a clean slate approach and um, start from scratch on how we define low performing schools, how our statutory structure treats and supports low performing schools versus others who would like to um, take the low hanging fruit. And by that I mean look at what is wrong with the current statutes in low performing schools uh, and correct those in the form of a technical correction. So for example, what I'm talking about here in the latter category is some superintendents have said to me, Rachel, why don't we take D schools that meet growth out of that low performing school definition? If they're D schools but they've met growth, then they're doing good things for the student population that they have and by definition we shouldn't label those schools as low performing schools. And I'm hearing that from charter school leaders also. Uh, another uh, item of discussion on this low performing school revision tack is uh, the personnel um, penalties that are in statute where we have the new definition of low performing schools and because of that it has triggered old statutes on the books with regard to full blown teacher evaluations and uh, for example principal uh, disciplinary action just by virtue of that label being a low performing school on that school. Yes ma'am. Uh, one thing to keep in mind it, this is the short session and at some point the State Board of Education <coughs> will have to make a decision about low performing schools as it relates to ESSA and that of course is a much longer conversation requiring much input from our stakeholders across North Carolina <coughs> and for you to make a final decision as to what would be in our plan. Is there a conversation <coughs> going on about the scale, uh, moving back to uh, the 10 to 15? I believe that's going to be her next item. Yes, sir. Uh, you're referencing the A through F school performance grades and that's our lucky number 13. So this year, this upcoming year being the 16-17 school year, the way the current law stands is that we would revert back to a 10 point scale. So without a short session fix of at a minimum keeping the 15 point scale that we currently have, uh, without that fix in the short session by law we would revert back to a 10 point scale for purposes of the 16-17 school year. And just as recent as this week, I've heard uh, legislators both on the Senate and House side still wanting, to, still thinking about the A through F school performance grades formula. So uh, we shall see what kind of bills are introduced on that score, but at minimum to maintain the 15 point scale. And likewise, with the accountability and testing system, this board will have to make uh, the decision about what you want to be as the federal accountability system. And the law, the federal law does say that it is a goal that the state and the federal accountability system be aligned. But there is a continuum. Uh, the state board could have, its, could have a federal accountability system and we maintain, and the General Assembly could maintain the current accountability system, so you would have two types of accountability system to the place where both of those systems could be aligned and be one in the same. And uh, there will be lots of conversation throughout North Carolina as we continue to meet with st stakeholders to get that feedback. And, uh, the reason why I mention it now is that we are beginning to start a meeting with stakeholders across North Carolina to have public hearings and uh, we would like for you to be involved in any of those public hearings uh, as your schedule permits and we will send those to you but I just wanted to have you to have that as a backdrop uh, as it relates to the AF uh, grade A through F performance system and uh, it's imperative and uh, required that we hear from superintendents, our curriculum specialists, our teachers, our parents, our citizens, our business people to uh, make recommendations ultimately that will come to you 
to make the final decision as it relates to the accountability system for ESSA. Am I hearing you say you want to make that decision once and not uh, and not make it for the short session and then make it again for? That'd be nice. Yes. Yeah. Uh, just to remember the history. There was a time when we were going out and giving awards for schools of excellence, and one month later, uh, they didn't make AYP, and uh, so they uh, so the federal uh, distinction was uh, entirely different. Poles apart uh, in those cases, very confusing to the public. And we do not have the time to go through that deliberation and all of the stakeholder input prior to the short you session. Sure don't. I have a quick question, Dr. Atkinson, with regard to the topic that you're on right now. How, uh, how would you assess um, the current situation of alignment with state accountability, well, the accountability required by the General Assembly, and let's say our current waiver from the Department of Education? Well, uh, our waiver uh, is now, will be void, and we'll, will end at the end of this school year. Mm -hmm. The federal legislation uh, has one major difference from what is already the General Assembly's A through F accountability system. The new ESSA requires another indicator, uh, at least one other indicator, to be added to the elementary and middle level that would go beyond an end of grade test. So at the least, if we did nothing else to comply with federal law, we would have to add another indicator for elementary and middle. So that's the major difference, or a major difference. Thank you. So obviously, we're looking at that Every Student Succeeds Act and the decision points for state stakeholders and starting even before now in apprising our legislature of where those decision points are and helping them make informed decisions. We've had two if not three presentations just on that new federal law at the General Assembly here in the last uh, three to four months. So you, um, you can see the remaining bit of our draft set of issues and uh, the remaining items will not come as any surprise to you in the way of early childhood education, principal pay, et cetera. Uh, the chart, and we can discuss this more later or now, I know that we're pressed for time, but it was suggested to me by folks at the General Assembly to take recent General Assembly mandates, that which is in recent state law, and look at where our needs would be to ensure that those state laws are fulfilled. Uh, for example, in last year's budget, section 8.41 of the budget, there is a series of several pages on uh, essentially putting a steroid shot in the arm of educator preparation oversight. And so when we look at other states and the kind of staffing that they have, for example, in Georgia, in looking at the oversight of schools of education in what is their comparable board of education, uh, they have several staff members for uh, 17 constituent institutions. Here, right now, we have one staff member who would be responsible for 50 constituent institutions. So you know the discussion uh, or what is on what is weighing heavily on our minds is how how can we ensure the success of state laws that are being passed so this is just a sampling of recent priorities set by the General Assembly and where we are in terms of staffing so uh, with that said if there are any questions or comments that concludes our legislative update and of course we will be back uh, with you in April. Uh, Mr. Alcorn? Well, you, um, we're going to be voting on the supplemental budget recommendations later on. Yes, to sir. To be consistent with uh, your issues. Like, number one, is that the, de the professional development? What we talked about yesterday on the $12 million? Was yes, that sir, it is. To be consistent with that. And um, number two, on the teacher's pay, 
um, one of our considerations is to be regionally ranked number one. Is that um, is that consistent with uh, would that be consistent with what uh, you're presenting? I would amend whatever the board decide based on whatever the board decides today on budget recommendations. We'll amend this agenda to be in a lot in alignment with the budget recommendations. Okay. So. If that's a priority of the board and we want to go there and say we want to be regionally ranked number one or wherever, then we would we would want to okay. say it in our that's legislative like, agenda. Okay. I would imagine. Okay. Number seven um, on the uh, turnaround low performing schools. Is there? Um, yesterday we, we heard a lot of numbers on that. Is 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 that a position a place where we can put a return on investment on a, uh, a predicted predictive model on that yes sir in fact we can use uh, the million dollar figure for dropouts yeah. and uh, I think we can calculate that fairly easily I think it's important to have a number on as right. many of these as possible a dollar amount for those and the last one's number 10 that's my favorite because it's uh, it definitely shows a return of uh, six to one yeah. thank you <laughs> thank you any sure. other comments? Yeah, just uh, uh, it would be helpful as you're moving through the next 45 days if we merge the two uh, documents into something that aligned uh, together so that as we're adopting uh, those that there's a, a consistent protocol or format. Uh, I do like what you're doing here on the uh, top 10 recent mandates or priorities and listing those laws and then what's required to do that. I'd suggest maybe over the next eight or ten months that we do that with our strategic plan as well. If we've got uh, goals that this board is adopting with, with metrics and we and we have needs in to to uh, to do that maybe we uh, to achieve those we go to the 17-18 doing that right yeah 17-18 session uh, with those goals and those metrics. Uh, and to be clear, this is this document is from the is for the 13 session. I mean the uh, sorry, 16 session. Uh, the 13 items are. Yes, sir. Okay, and so the document we got earlier in the week that we were looking at, this is kind of continuing to winnow that down for a a short session. Yes, sir. Uh, agenda. Good. Any other comments or questions? Thank you, Ms. Bowman. Thank you.